it's great to be here, and it's great to hear John. And uh, we just need to keep telling him what, what he needs to say and what he needs to do. But um, I want to, Disability History Month gives us the opportunity to think about disability currently. And of course, he's just been talking about that. And not just historically, which is uh, you know, what Disability History Month is about. And I think disability history and disability arts are inextricably linked. And disability arts has been described as the last avant-garde with disabled artists as agents for change, calling out on injustice, oppression and discrimination. And many years ago as a disabled artist using disability as a source material for my own work, I met other artists who were making work that I thought was powerful and insightful. I never saw it in public galleries or institutions, even though I thought it was everything that I wanted art to be. So as a, a director of an organisation, I began to collect it because disabled, disabled artists would die in, the work was being lost, and we needed to do something. And that something became NDACA, the National Disability Arts Collection and Archive. It's now being delivered by Shape Arts with partners, um, Books New University. And NDACA is a heritage lottery funded project with additional funding from the Arts Council and the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. And we go live, as it says up there, in 2018. David Heave is the chief exec of SHAPE and his NDACA team are here in the room. So if you want to find out more afterwards when we network, there's Georgia, Alex, and Sarah somewhere here. So stick your hands up and then people know who you are and then you can talk afterwards. <laughs> so, Richard, next slide, please. So we often refer to NDACA as demonstrating the golden age of disability arts and the politics of a time when disabled people <coughs> broke down barriers and forced through civil rights legislation, making it illegal to discriminate against us. Now that was over 21 years ago. So 21 years later, do you think we are still facing discrimination? Of course we are. Actually, disability hate crime is up by 53% last year, 53% not even recorded uh, in many cases. In 2010, the DDA, the Disability Discrimination Act, became subsumed into the Equality Act 2010, and many say watered down. I, I think we lost the ground we fought for, uh, with disabled people, as John just said, being the hardest hit by the austerity of the last decade. Uh, next slide, please, Richard. And sometimes I think we see history as a way of demonstrating progress. But to quote Hegel, we learn from history that we don't learn from history. And this installation by disabled artist Caroline Carders always reminds me of art history. Humanity was able to put man on the moon, apparently, in 1969, which was a small step for man, apparently, a huge step for mankind, but not for disabled mankind. We'd have to wait a further 50 years before legislators considered it necessary to make public transport accessible. And as we lurch, as we lurch inexorably toward 2020, I'm certain that that milestone is going to be missed. It, but this is still a good example of how art can have impact. Just as we're programmed to obey road signs, we can see this as a signpost to the lack of progress to deliver our emancipation as disabled people. So the social model of disability asserts that we are disabled by the barriers that society constructs, be they physical, attitudinal, sociological barriers, lots of you know this. If you don't, look on the shape website, it articulates very clearly on there. These works signpost some of the issues that we face and they raise uh, 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 as barriers to our inclusion. So being able to use so-called public transport, not being patronised, discovering that the restaurant isn't accessible to the art gallery. As disabled people, we're an oppressed minority, a large minority though, 13 million of us. We're around one in five of the population. We're an open and welcoming group, and in fact, the longer you lot live, the more likely you are to come and join us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide. So these photographs from the Endaka collection are from 25 years ago, but they could be from right now, as we are once again being the hardest hit by the slingy that the cuts are having on us. I thought, next slide please, Richard. I thought I would end by showing you some work by disabled artists from The Shape and then Dacca collections, alongside these historical photographs from those past political struggles. This is 
uh, by Tom Shakespeare, who has a, a, a chondroplasia, which is a form of dwarfism. And he exploits it in this self-portrait, uh, bottom left, where he recreates the Lamentation of Christ, which was originally painted by Mantegna in around 1480. Mantegna's in the top right. And what, what he did, Mantegna, was very foreshortening, dramatic foreshortening and perspective. And of course, what Shakespeare does, uh, uh, does it for real, as a real life short person, you know, a person in the streets of growth, which I think is interesting, clever, and funny. Okay, next slide. In Schindler, medication time, if you look closely at this work, is self explanatory. But treating the symptoms, not the causes, perhaps. And this is one of many works that draws to think about the way we deliver on mental health services. Next slide, please, Richard. Simon Raven, mental frame. One in four adults has been diagnosed with mental illness, despite it having an effect on so many of us. Prejudice still exists. Services are in short supply. Very little investment. 94% of learning disabled people are still unable to find meaningful employment at a time when unemployment is the lowest since 1975. Next, please. This is by Sue Austin Portal again in the Endeka collection. But you know, the work in the Endeka collection highlights our oppression, but they're also works and not just visual arts, uh, but poetry, creative writing, theatre, dance that demonstrate the joy of life and the unique insight and contribution that disabled people can add to the arts and the culture of our country when given the opportunity and the welcome and the resources to take part. I hope that by next slide, yeah, I hope that by celebrating disability history through Disability History Month, it will remind us of the need to build a better and more inclusive Britain and one that supports disabled people to have the same choices and rights as non-disabled people and that we can learn from history to ensure that we create accessible environments and develop inclusive practice in all aspects of our society so that disabled people can have what you have. It's not difficult. It just needs the right will and the right vision. Okay, thank you.